Hello everyone, I'm Chris Parson. I'm delighted to bring this panel discussion to you with some well-respected faces in rugby. We'll come to the introductions in a minute or so, but uh, a huge thanks firstly to Lydos for facilitating this discussion, for helping us make it happen. We've got Ryan Wilson with us, Glasgow Warriors, co-captain, 50 caps of Scotland, uh, well-respected player on off the field, John Manson. Um, head of Rugby Operations at Old Glory DC, former Rugby Operations Manager at Glasgow Warriors, and also Callum Giddens, uh, who's formerly with Glasgow Warriors, now with Old Glory DC, and a player and coaching role, hugely respected world over, uh, certainly from his time in, uh, in New Zealand uh, and, and, and in Scotland. So great to see you all, looking well. One of the, one of the topics we're going to uh, look at is the community and how important the community is to the club and what you represent when you play. How do you get the community support? It doesn't just happen, does it? Especially, I suppose, for Glasgow, having gone through the process of the last 20 years, turning professional and, and engaging the community. What type of things do you do to get that community spirit, that community representation and the players? A lot of it, I'd say, is through charity stuff. Um, I, I know when Pump and Cully were there, there was a big drive on uh, food banks and stuff like that for, for people in the community and underprivileged kids, etc. Um, so we did a lot of that sort of stuff. Supporting the rugby clubs around the west of Scotland is another big one. Um, you see some of our best players come from those teams. So we've got to make sure that we're putting back there. You, you know, the likes of Rob Harley, who's got his 250th game, a man that came from west of Scotland rugby club just up the mm. road from Scotson Stadium. So um, try and do as much with them as possible. Um, but it's important and we want to make sure that yeah, when it comes uh, game day against Edinburgh, that the boys from the West, and I think a lot more probably going over that way, you've got the guys up in Fife that should probably be Edinburgh fans, but with the likes of Pete Horn and Chris Vazaro um, in our team, sway towards us as well. So I think we cover most of Scotland, Mossy. And Callum, it's, um, you're from staunch rugby heritage. But you're part of something now where you're trying to grow the game, really, or introduce mm -hmm. the game maybe to a new fan base and, and people who are not so aware as... Uh, certainly they would be growing up in, in New Zealand. So is that a big challenge for Old Glory? Or, or is, it, say, is it just a matter of getting out there, performing well, and the, and the community will, will join? Yeah, um, there is a lot of interest around it over here. You know, you speak, especially when you're, when you're travelling as a group, a lot of people come up and ask what, you know, what sport you're playing. You mentioned rugby and they actually know what rugby's about and then they ask where you play, um, where you train. So there's, there's genuine interest in, in rugby. I think we need to build the game at lower levels, which I'm sure there's plans in place for that and getting younger kids into it because you're competing with so many different sports sports over here. But I think rugby's got the recipe for, for a lot of support and how exciting the game is. So, yeah, it's going to be very interesting. It's quite it's quite cool to be be a part of something brand new over here. How quickly do you think it will grow, John? Um, you're obviously on-field roles, off-field roles, but I assume part of your role within the club is growing the club, looking forward, projections. Will it grow quickly? I assume it will um, over there or, or will a lot depend on performance? It doesn't really depend on performance. To be honest. One thing about the fans over here, um, even if you don't have a, a terrific game or you get beat, the fans are 100% behind you. The, the mm. social media comments, even after a defeat, are so positive, it's unbelievable. You know, they, they say, oh, hard luck, guys, get better luck next time. You know, and they just, they just stick with you. The fans are incredible. Honestly, it's it's good. The fans, the fans are growing, and Cully will say that. I mean, you, you meet them after the game, Cully, and they're unbelievable. I mean, they're they're literally patting you on the back and saying well done, and they just, they'll support you till 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 whatever. You know, it's an unbelievable. I think they just love. Yeah, it's new and fresh, and I think there's a especially in Washington and DC here. There's a quite a big rugby community, and for them to have something on a professional level is you know, it's, it's pretty special. So, yeah, I think I just love it. Certainly in the community, it's strong, obviously, in Glasgow as well, Ryan. But what the, I think what the community um, can support and get behind and feel part of is, is a culture that represents them. And I'm going to look at team culture now. It's Team cultures obviously can be set by players, it can be set by coaches, it can be set by the environment and the people around it. But... For your experience and, and your influence with the team culture at Glasgow, who sets it? Is it are you are you trying to create something or are you trying to represent that community and weave it into the, the culture that uh, that you set for for the players on and off the field? We have loads of uh, meetings trying to develop that side of the culture stuff, and 
you know, we've got mantras across there, which is one of them's obviously inspire our community. And we feel that if those guys from the community can see a little bit of themselves in us, then it's, it's going to make um, them a little bit more proud and, and want to come and support us. And you, you, you're a big part of that. And you have been for a long time, but you were obviously came to the club after the club was established. So was that something that identity, that team culture, was that passed on to you? And then when you decide to move on, do you pass it on to someone else? So it stays as part of the DNA of the club, I assume. Yeah, you try and make sure that you leave um leave the right marks on the club for people to take it on. And yeah, that was put in place. You know, when I got there, it was the likes of Big Al in charge, Big Al Kellock. Who he's is, in charge is, now, right enough, huh? Exactly. He's properly in charge now. He, he's my boss. Um, but he, um, his Glasgow through and through. So, mm-hmm. I mean, you look at the likes of some of the guys retiring recently, the likes of um, Tommy Seymour, Chris mm-hmm. Fazzaro. These guys have embodied exactly what that culture is their whole career. It's been 11 years, Chris Fazzaro at the club, and he lived that every single day. So for the young guys to come in and see him living it, you know, we want them to carry that on. So it's definitely something we talk about and, and try and live. And Kelly, you've uh, you've been part of successful clubs your whole career and you've been part of successful cultures. How, um, I suppose, how different is the culture you're in at the moment or is it really quite similar, the things you, you were part of at Glasgow, obviously, that Ryan's talking about? Um, what's the team culture like and how do you develop it at Old Glory? Yeah, it's... um. It's certainly not the same as a well-established club. You know, we're going through that process now, mm-hmm. like creating an identity for ourselves. We've got standards we we live by daily. And um, a backstory around the the old glory flag with William Driver and how he kept it from the, you know, kept it over in the war and kept it safe for the flag and and used that to, as a representation of freedom and, and things like that. So we, we've got a bit of a story ourselves. We're just trying to, you know, it's all about, performing well and being a to me anyways has been a working hard every day and trying to show that through how we play and show that to the the community around us so we can sort of build on that foundation um but yeah like it's a it's basically an open canvas for us which is quite exciting we can you know the club can go wherever we want it as long as we're willing to put the put the work in so yeah it's a little bit different but in time it will be very very similar i think now leadership is always a term that's thrown about in, in all walks of life, understandably. It's a massively important bit. For me, there's loads of different ways of being a leader. Um, and leadership develops, it changes, um, but it's vital important for, for the club you represent. Um, Ryan and Carly, you were co-captains together at, at Glasgow. Um, both have captained the team as well. I suppose it's, a, it's such a generic topic, leadership, but what do you think are the, the key things, the, the key details or behaviours that, that can make us a, a successful leader in, in, a, in a rugby team, in a rugby environment? When when we were working together, we sort of had different roles, didn't we? I, especially on, you know, on game day and stuff like that, you'd have... I always felt Wilson had the passion and the, sort of the... What's the word? You know, the role Manic. of getting... Yeah, getting the boys together before a game, you know, and I, I kind of assumed the role, I suppose, of just making sure that the messages were were clear and I'd leave the rest to Wilson to get the boys, you know, fired up and ready to go into battle, which I think it worked really well, eh? Um, but for me, I always, as a leader or, yeah, as a leader, I, I try and just make sure that I walk the talk, you know, mm-hmm. things that I talk about, I want to, I want to back up on the field or at training and, if I if I can play, if I can try and be one of the best players on the field and show guys around me and build confidence into them through that sort of performance, then I feel like it's half the battle won. And Ryan, is, uh, is Cully quite accurate in his description of your co-captain days? Cully's spot on with the way that he led. He was always the one that I could talk the talk but couldn't always walk the walk. <laughs> Whereas <laughs> I was able to go out there and, and talk a good game. But every every week, week in, week out, we always asked for like the aggression and the brutality. And every week you got it from him. And that was the best thing about the way that he led. Um, definitely led from the front. I think the two years that I co-captain with Cal was probably the two years I learned the most. Like watching mm. him, he the way he treats people, the way he puts an arm around people and he, just the whole the whole persona of the man when he gets some of the younger guys, you know, along with him 
I learned a lot from that. I used to be a lot harder on the younger boys. I was mm-hmm. a little bit more of the old school mindset with the younger guys and and thought like you go earn your stripes and don't get me wrong, like we were both like that with some of the younger guys, but he was a lot more caring than me. So I probably learned a little bit of that from Cal and uh, and have put that in into action a bit more. Are you going soft, Ryan? I'm probably going soft in my old age, but um, so that was certainly something I, I saw in him and, mm-hmm. and thought that, you know, I could do more of. And I said at the top of that question, John, just the fact that leaders change, leadership styles change, everybody's different, everybody evolves. You, you've had a close eye, obviously, at Glasgow Warriors and the professional leader, now Old Glory DC. You played international rugby way back when. Um, how's leadership change? You, you'll see, you'll be part of leaders, you'll work with leaders alongside, play alongside how has leadership changed from, say, when you were playing international rugby in the nineties? Um, I don't think I don't think it has changed, Mossy. That I much? Think, I don't think so. I think um, we've got a big emphasis here. I mean, Coach Douglas here has a big emphasis on character. You know, and he picks players not just through rugby ability, it's through character as well. And I think that I think that transcends the ages as well. I mean, when you mm-hmm. think about when we played Mossy back in the day. We had some big characters who were natural leaders, you know. And I think when you look at, at Cully and, and Ryan, that's what you have now. I mean, they're big characters and they're, they're leading in different ways, you know. Um, and, and what Ryan said about Cully is absolutely right. I mean, he's he, he leads by example, but then he's also got that ability to be a bit more nurturing, a bit no, more caring. And I think that's why I was desperately keen to get him across to DC because he's got those two qualities. I knew, I knew he would lead by example, which for such a young club over here is hugely important but he's also got that ability to be, be caring and nurturing and be a good coach so it's a, it's a pretty special blend I'm, on the other hand I'm not sure um, how Wilson would have been as the player coach across here I mean he'd have had the, he'd have had the rough and tumble but I'm there's not time sure yet there's time yet Ryan it's, it's funny you say that though because I'm not lying when I say this I often think what would Wilson be doing in this situation honestly I think it quite quickly and I'm like would he would he you know, how would he approach this? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, funny. It's like, it's like leaders, it's like going back to leadership mostly. It's like what Cully says here it's that it's the two you can have various ways to be to be a leader, you know, and there's various ways to deal with certain situations, and you just got to take it. You've got to have the ability to adapt and recognize what you need to do at that time, mm-hmm. if do the right thing. I mean, it's all very well being a, being a great leader, but if you make the wrong decision and do something yeah. at the same time, you know. You mm. could send the send the ship a bit astray, you know. So, um, I think what you had with those two is, as you have identified, they were two great leaders, but in very different ways. Listen, I've taken too much of your time, but thank you so much, um, uh for for your time, for your your input. Really enjoyed it. it could have gone on a lot, a lot longer, but just uh, you know, from Glasgow Wars' point of view, thanks again to Lydas for facilitating this, for for helping us out, for putting it on, and it just leaves me to wish you guys the the best of luck. Thank you once again. Cheers, Mossy. Thanks, Mossy.